disappointed in Jesus. Doubt has never crossed my mind, for in Him no fault I find. I've been discouraged with my family, forsaken by my friends, but I've never been disappointed in Him. Disappointed in Jesus, doubt has never crossed my mind, for in Him no fault I find. I've been discouraged with my family, forsaken by my friends, but I've never been disappointed in Him. Be pretty easy if you get disappointed in me. Probably pretty easy for me to get disappointed in you, but you'll never be disappointed in him. Thank God for that promise. We're glad to have Brother Henderson with us tonight and one of our missionaries. Thank God for him coming by and being with us. Anybody else, Mister? We're glad you're here. Thank you for coming to be in the house of the Lord. I'm going to read from uh, Psalms 116, our scripture. We'll read this chapter. It'll be a, say a few little things. We'll say very much. It'll be long. Psalms 116. <clears throat> I'll read the whole chapter, but certainly I'm not going to talk about the whole chapter. About three verses I'll say a few things about, maybe. Uh, verse 1. I love the Lord because He's heard my voice and my supplication. Because He's inclined His ear unto me, therefore will I call upon Him as long as I live. Amen. The sorrows of death come past from me, and the pains of hell get a hold upon me. I found trouble and sorrow. Then called I upon the name of the Lord, O Lord. I beseech thee, deliver my soul. Gracious is the Lord and righteous, yea, our God is merciful. The Lord preserveth the simple, and I was brought low, and he helped me. Return to thy rest, O my soul, for the Lord had dealt bountifully with thee. For thou hast delivered my soul from death, and mine eyes from tears and my feet from falling. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believe therefore have I spoken I was greatly afflicted. I said in my haste all men are liars. What shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits toward me? I will take the cup of, of the salvation. Call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows unto the Lord and I in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. O Lord, truly I am thy servant. I am thy servant, the son of the handmaid, and thou hast loose my bonds. I will offer to thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving. Call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows unto the Lord now in the presence of all of his people. In the courts of the Lord's house, and in the midst of the old Jerusalem, praise ye the Lord. I want to talk a little bit, if you can, tonight, uh, 
A quick like on three verses, say a few things about three verses. And uh, verse number one, verse number eight, and then I believe it's verse number 14 that uh, I want to say a few things about. And verse one said, uh, I love the Lord because he's heard my voice and my supplication. Amen. And so I'm so thankful that many, many times in life he's heard my voice, he's heard my cry. And I love him because he has heard uh, my cry and my supplication so many times. We sang that song, Prayer Bells of Heaven Beats a Man Made Law, and it really does. Yes, sir. Jesus said, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, and that's what you will, and it shall be done unto you. And how many times have I cried to him and he's heard and answered my prayer? And you too, if you're saved, and I'm sure you can say the same thing, that uh, he's heard our prayer so many times. And uh, so for that reason, we love him. I'm so proud the Lord fixed it where we could call upon him and ask him when we need help. You know, uh, the Bible said this is the confidence we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, we know that he hears us. Yep. And if we know that he hears us, we know how the petition that we desire of him. And so we can call him just any time. Never get a busy signal, never get an answering machine, and never get a call and wait and stuff like that. If the line's clear between you and God, you can call him any time you want to call him. Amen. Censor's never busy, always on the line, the song goes. You can hear from heaven almost any time. I like this line. The song says it's a royal service, and it's free for one and all. I'm proud it's for one, just the same it is for another. It's for the preacher, it's for the deacon, it's for the layman, it's for uh, the little boys and girls, it's for everybody, whosoever. And I'm proud we can talk to God when we need to talk to Him and and he will hear us and he'll have mercy on us and help us. And uh, there's nothing too small to pray about and probably nothing too great to pray about, I guess. But uh, we need to stay in shape where we can pray and call on God. Amen. It'd be bad when somebody, family member, somebody like that would need prayer. Somebody in church need prayer. Somebody sick need prayer. Some sinner need prayer. And we weren't in shape to pray for him, wasn't it? And so he said, I love him because he's heard my prayer and uh, heard my supplication. And then uh, I love him because he called me. I don't, I don't understand the call of God. I don't understand about that. But uh, the Bible said, uh, I believe it's in Timothy, who hath saved us and called us, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace. And uh, if the Lord called most of our works, because of our works, we probably wouldn't get called. But uh, I'm proud that the Lord sees out in the future. He knows, he knows what the future holds. God holds the future in the hand. And so I love him because he, he called me and let me have a little part in the work of the Lord. In fact, Paul said, when it pleased God, who separated me from mother's womb, called me. By his grace, revealed his son to me. He said to me, like I confer not with flesh and blood. And, uh, you know, uh, as small as I am, and I was poor and backward and bashful and, and uh, unlearned all these many things, but still somehow the Lord saw something somewhere that he could use me a little for his glory, and I thank him for that. Amen. You know, he could let just anybody do what I've done through the years, and he could let just anybody do what you've done through the years, too. But I'm proud to let us do it. I'm proud, to, I'm proud we can have a little part in the work of the Lord. And I love the Lord for that. I thank Him. I thank Him for, for all that He's done for me. And all, not only hearing my prayer and calling, but I, 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 I love Him because of the help. Many times He's helped me. Sometimes there's been a few times in life you didn't have time to say, Dear Heavenly Father, and things like that. And you start to pray off what we'd call right. But sometimes all we can do is just say, Help, Lord. I remember a few times in my life I didn't have time to say nothing, just help, Lord. Well, but that'll work. 
Psalms 12, I believe it is, it said, started off, help Lord. And so sometimes we get in trouble, we get in a tight. We need the Lord right then. We don't have time to pray for about five minutes. Amen. Need him then. And uh, so I'm proud that he'll come to our rescue yes. and he'll help us. He will help us. Sometimes I feel like we're kind of beginning to sink. You know, Peter, the Bible said Peter was beginning to sink and said, Lord, save me. Lord, reached out God and saved him. I feel like there's been a few times in life I was kind of sinking a little bit. And I'm proud he'd reach down and get us. And uh, get us up and get us going again. He'll help us during sickness. He'll help us during sorrow. He'll help us during the storms. And he'll just help us any time. And I thank God for that. So I love him because of what he's done for me. But let's look down at verse number 8. And uh, just a minute. And he said, For thou hast delivered my soul from death, and my eyes from tears, and my feet from falling. Amen. And thank God for deliverance that we have in the Lord. First, three things he said. The first thing he said, he delivered my soul from death. Do you remember, remember when you was in sin, when that condemnation upon you? And, uh, and you're scared, you didn't know what to do. And, and, uh, but you know one thing, you needed help. You know you needed God. And so he had mercy on us. Sing the song sometimes, once in Egypt bondage, but deliverance came to me. <laughs> I remember being in bondage. I, I remember being in bondage to sin. But I'm proud the Lord passed by. Amen. And the blessed thing about it, I'm proud he's still passing by today. For everybody that needs him and everybody that call upon him. And uh, so the Bible said after we are saved and after he does deliver our soul from death, it said to stand fast in the liberty with Christ has made us free. Be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. The Lord don't want us to get entangled up with things of this whole world, but He wants us to stay free in the Lord and love Him and live for Him. And uh, so He's delivered our soul from death. And uh, we don't have to worry about uh, uh, standing before God as a sinner. The Bible said in John 5, 24, Very, very, I say unto you, He that hear my word, believeth on him that sent me, hath everlasting life. And said, He shall not come into condemnation but he's passed from death unto life. Amen. And so we'll never stand before God as a sinner. We'll, all, we'll be saved when we stand before God. And what a blessing thought to know that. So I'm proud that the Bible said you'll know the truth. The truth will make you free. If the Son makes you free, then you're free indeed. Amen. Children of Israel had to have a, a Passover lamb to get them out of Egypt bondage. And we had to have a Passover lamb to get us out of sins bondage. John was baptized and looked out across the plain one day and said, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. What a Savior. They sang the song, Oh, what a Savior, what a Savior. And uh, I read over in Hebrews. Let me show you what I read over in Hebrews. Of it. And it said, uh, talking about the Lord, talking about our Savior, our Redeemer. And it said uh, uh, to Jesus Christ, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separated from sinners and higher than the heavens. Amen. What about that? That's what it said about our Savior, the one that redeemed us over the book of Hebrew. And uh, it said he's holy, harmless, undefiled, separated from sinners and higher than the heavens. So uh, I'm proud and thankful that he delivered my soul one day. Amen. Picked me up out of sin. Alan likes that song about love lifted me. I kind of like it myself too. I'm proud love did lift us up. Now that Mary Clay and put our feet on the rock. And then not only said he delivered our soul from death, but said he's delivered my eyes from tears. <clears throat> There's been many times in life he's done that for me. And I know he's done it for you. And uh, there's no respect to the person of the Lord. And uh, so many times, there's a lot of tears to be shed in this life. It's, uh, and uh, a lot of sorrow and things like that down here sometimes. But uh, I'm proud he'll deliver us sometimes when we need him so bad. Jesus said, you now therefore have sorrow to the disciples. But he said, I'll see you again. And your heart will rejoice and your joy no man taketh from you. When my soul is overwhelmed within me, he said, lead me to that rock that's higher than I. Amen. I sure am proud there's a higher power than us. It's you. I mean, boy, I don't know what I'd do if it wasn't for that higher power. I'm proud he'll help us. And, uh, Pays to live right, pays to do right. 
and uh, live for God. And uh, when the time comes that we do need our eyes delivered from them tears, he'll hear us. I thought about Hezekiah. And I ain't going to tell you much, say much about this, but I thought about Hezekiah. And the Bible, I, I, like, to, I like to read about uh, Hezekiah and his character. But then now, the Bible said Hezekiah, when he was just a child, when he was first king, said he'd done what was right in the sight of the Lord. That's the reason I like him. You can't improve on doing what's right. He done what was right. Now I know at the end, and what I'm about to say now at the end, and he was older and his sons grew up and they had uh, sort of made a mess out of things his son had. And Isaiah carried that message that day and said, Isaiah, you better set, Hezekiah, you better set your house over. Says, you're going to die and not live. Well, I thought about the, his younger days when he was a young man. he done what was right in the sight of the Lord. He tried to follow God. So the Bible said when he got that message, he turned his face to the wall and began to pray and cry. And said, Lord, you remember how I walked before with a perfect heart and tried to do what was right in your sight? And the Lord does remember them things. And so the Lord nudged uh, Isaiah, told him, said, go back and carry him another message. Tell him I've heard his prayer and I've seen his tears. And I'm going to add to his life 15 years. Mm -hmm. And so he won't forget you when you get in, get in places like that. When the, when the sorrow fills your heart and life and troubles come and he's always there. And then he said, he's, he's delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears. But he said, my feet from falling. We have that blessed assurance in the Lord. And uh, we don't have to worry about falling. We may stumble along sometimes, but we're not going to fall. We're not, I mean, we're not going to stay down. Let me put it like that. We might get down as far as our knees, but we'll get up and go again. If we really belong to the Lord, if we're a child of God, and we have that blessed assurance. The psalmist said, I lift up mine eyes to the hills. From whence cometh all my help, my help come the Lord. Made heaven and earth. When mother and father forsake me, said the Lord will take me up. Job said, I know my Redeemer liveth. Paul said, I know in whom I believe. Jude said, we're preserved in Jesus Christ. And I only know so many scriptures we can say about that. But I won't. I just want to say a word about one more scripture here. And that's all. In the, let me find it here. Verse number, verse number 14. I will pay my vows unto the Lord now in the presence of all of his people. Amen. Verse 18 reads the same way. I never had no set to today, though, yet. Verse 18 said, I will pay my vows unto the Lord now in the presence of all of his people. Two verses reads just alike. And I tell you, we need to, I don't believe we need to make more new vows. Now, if you want to, I'm not telling you not to. I don't care. But uh, I'm not sure we need to uh, make new vows. We just try to need to keep up with the ones we've already made. Amen. And the Bible said it's better not to make a vow yeah. than it is to make one and break it. Yeah. And a lot of marriage vows broke today. I know that. And uh, but how many times have we told ourselves or told the Lord and and uh, in prayer and what we were doing that uh, you know we're just going to do better? Have we done better? How many times we said we purposed in our heart we're going to pray more? Have we prayed more? How many times we purposed in our heart we're going to read the Bible more? Have we? How many times we purposed in our heart that we're going to be more faithful to God? than we had in the past. Have we been faithful? And there's so many things could be said about that, but I'm not going to, I'm going to quit here. But uh, he said, I'll pay my vows, the Lord, in the presence of all of his people. And uh, I'll tell you, probably about time for us to try to pay up a little and uh, keep them vows that we made to the Lord. We made a lot of them, I guess. And, and uh, a lot of people ask. Maybe some don't do it, but a lot of people do ask. And so uh, we need to pay our vow. Let me read that verse one more time. I'll be done here. I will pay my vows unto the Lord now. Now. In the presence of all of his people. 
And so may the Lord help us that we'd be more careful about making vows and not paying them. Dear Lord, I want to thank you for letting us come to prayer meeting tonight and sing a few songs and read the Word of God and study a little bit from your Word. I just, I, I thank you so much for the promise of the Word of the Lord. And I'm proud we'd stand on these troublesome times. It is troublesome times, I know that. It is peerless time. But I'm proud we'd stand on the Word of God. And uh, Lord, it's unshakable, unmovable. And Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall not pass away. So I'm proud we can stand on it in troublesome time. Bless everybody in the building this evening, Lord. Please bless everybody in every knee, in every heart, in every life that you would meet according to the will of God. Bless Brother Henderson, I'm sure came by to be with us. Bless him, his family, his knee. Bless this church and help us, Lord, that we stay close to God and Close enough, Lord, we can hear the voice of God as you speak to our heart. And uh, we we'll follow you and honor you, Lord, in these last days. If you let us live till the weekend to come back, may it be a great day in the house of God. We'll love you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for coming to the service tonight.